I, I just wanted to just keep it, you know, simple and plain and not really try to overdo it with the... Diddy's indictment is the gift that keeps on giving. Just when you thought you knew everything, new information continues to emerge, not just about Diddy, but also about his friends and inner circle. Join us as we review the disturbing details revealed in his indictment following the rapper's arrest and bail denial. Law Enforcement Involvement, Homeland Security Raids The Southern District of New York has taken a strong stance on pursuing justice for the individuals who have come forward, accusing Sean Diddy Combs of various illegal activities. The claims involve using his power, wealth, and influence to manipulate others for his own benefit. These accusations include forcing individuals to engage in activities. In November of last year, Cassandra Ventura, better known as Cassie, filed a significant lawsuit against Combs. She accused him of years of physical, emotional abuse during their relationship. Despite Combs denying these accusations, the lawsuit was settled almost immediately after it was filed. This rapid settlement, however, triggered a series of new legal actions. Numerous other allegations began to surface, with additional lawsuits claiming abuse and violence. Some of these cases even involved Combs' son. In March of this year, the investigation escalated further when Homeland Security agents executed raids on Combs' properties in Miami and Los Angeles. Armed with search warrants, the agents collected what appears to be a large volume of evidence. These were part of a broader investigation led by the Southern District of New York. While the details of the investigation were initially kept under wraps, the subsequent developments shed more light on the severity of the case. Fast forward to the present, and Combs has been arrested and formally charged. His arrest took place at the Park Hyatt Hotel in Manhattan, where he had been staying since September 5th. According to his defense team, Combs had been in New York in anticipation of these charges, demonstrating his intent to cooperate. His legal team argues that this proves he is not a flight risk and has been fully compliant. However, the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District, Damian Williams, expressed skepticism during a press conference, implying that merely responding to legal processes doesn't necessarily equate to cooperation in the legal sense. The prosecution's case, indictment breakdown. As the legal proceedings unfold, one of the key elements has been the unsealing of the major indictment against Combs. The indictment outlines three primary charges, conspiracy, fraud, and transportation. While Combs is the only individual named in the filing at this stage, prosecutors have hinted that more individuals could be implicated as the case progresses. On Tuesday, Combs entered a not guilty plea to all charges. The gravity of the situation cannot be understated, as he faces a minimum of 15 years in prison if convicted on all counts. At 54 years old, a conviction could potentially mean spending the remainder of his life behind bars. The prosecution's case paints a disturbing picture of Combs's actions over the years. These actions, according to the court filings, were part of a broader strategy to satisfy his own desires while protecting his public image. The indictment describes how Combs used his business empire as a front for his criminal activities, creating an organized enterprise designed to shield him from legal repercussions. Combs Legal Defense and Bail Argument As Combs continues to fight these charges, his legal team has been focused on securing his release on bail while he awaits trial. Combs' defense emphasizes that he has been fully cooperative with authorities and poses no risk of fleeing the country. They point to his presence in New York ahead of his arrest as evidence that he is prepared to face the charges head-on. However, the prosecution remains firm in their opposition to granting bail. Prosecutors argue that the nature of the charges necessitates keeping Combs in custody. They have also hinted at the possibility of more charges being brought against him and potential co-conspirators, which further complicates the question of bail. The court is expected to weigh these arguments carefully in the coming weeks as the legal battle intensifies. The Road Ahead for Sean Diddy Combs As Sean Diddy Combs faces one of the most significant legal battles of his life, the stakes are incredibly high. 
The charges against him carry the potential for a lengthy prison sentence, and the evidence presented by the prosecution paints a troubling picture of his alleged actions. While his defense team continues to argue for his innocence and cooperation, the outcome of the case remains uncertain. For now, the focus remains on the legal proceedings, as more details about the accusations and potential co-conspirators may emerge. Whether or not Combs will be granted bail and what additional charges might be brought are questions that will be answered in the coming weeks. What is clear, however, is that this chapter of Combs' life will have a profound impact on his future, regardless of the trial's outcome. This case, involving complex issues of power and influence, serves as a stark reminder of the far-reaching consequences of legal actions against high-profile individuals like Combs. The world will be watching closely as the trial progresses, with many awaiting justice for the victims who have bravely come forward. Understanding the Conspiracy At the heart of the charges against Sean Diddy Combs is a racketeering conspiracy, which essentially alleges that Combs orchestrated or participated in a criminal enterprise. In Combs' case, this enterprise didn't necessarily need to be a formal organization. Instead, the prosecution asserts that Combs led an informal but organized network of individuals who committed various crimes to further specific goals. These goals, according to the indictment, could have ranged from financial gain to satisfying Combs' personal desires. The prosecutors are attempting to show that the actions taken by Combs and his associates were not isolated incidents but were part of a larger, cohesive effort. The idea is that these crimes were committed in pursuit of a shared purpose, whether to protect Combs, maintain his reputation, or indulge his personal whims. While Combs may not be directly charged with each of these predicate crimes individually, they are considered part of the overall case because they were allegedly committed in furtherance of the broader racketeering operation. Allegations from past associates the accusations are consistent with previous lawsuits filed against Combs, notably by individuals who were once part of his inner circle. One such figure is Rodney Little Jones, a former producer who worked closely with Combs. Jones has publicly accused Combs of operating in violation of laws, and his allegations are eerily similar to what is now being presented in court. Jones isn't the only one. Many of the accusations brought forth by women, including Cassandra Ventura, known as Cassie, are tied to this broader charge. A particular incident from 2016 where a video allegedly showed Combs Ventura in a hotel elevator has been referenced in the indictment. While Combs later apologized on social media, this episode appears to have been part of a larger pattern of abuse behavior, as outlined by the prosecution. The alleged freak-off events One of the most shocking elements of the indictment involves what has been described as freak highly orchestrated parties. These events are said to have been a major component of Combs' criminal enterprise, where women were allegedly to participating. According to court filings, these parties were not random, but were carefully planned and executed by Combs and his associates. Victims of these events, many of whom believed they were entering romantic relationships with Combs, were allegedly lured into a false sense of security. The indictment describes how Combs wielded his power and prestige to these women in situations they couldn't easily escape from. Combs is accused of overseeing these events, ensuring that they met his personal desires. In some cases, the indictment claims that Combs would record the activities, adding another layer of control. The Charges This aspect of the case is crucial because it involves the violation of federal laws, which carry severe penalties. The charge extends beyond just the movement of individuals. It also covers the methods used to control them. The indictment alleges that Combs and his team would distribute controlled substances to the victims, ensuring they remained compliant and obedient. In some cases, the women were unaware they were being which only deepened their vulnerability. The indictment further details how these freak-offs could last for multiple days, during which victims were subjected to a range of degrading and harmful experiences. 
Following these events, it is reported that both Combs and the women to help them recover from the physical toll of the activities and the substances they had consumed. Control through influence. The court documents paint a picture of Combs as someone who wielded his influence not just to advance his career, but to control those around him. His business empire, including employees such as security personnel, household staff, and personal assistants, is alleged to have been complicit in facilitating these criminal activities. These individuals, knowingly or unknowingly, became part of the larger enterprise that helped Combs maintain his grip over his victims. The prosecution is trying to show that Combs did not act alone. Instead, he leveraged his extensive network of employees and associates to carry out his plans, making it difficult for his victims to escape his control. The indictment suggests that these individuals were aware of the illegal nature of their actions, but felt compelled to follow orders due to Combs' status and authority. Sean Combs' defense and bail plea. Since his arrest, Combs' legal team has been working to secure his release on bail. They argue that Combs is not a flight risk, pointing to the fact that he had been staying in New York ahead of the charges being filed, which they claim shows his willingness to cooperate. His defense team has also pushed back against the allegations, asserting that the charges are exaggerated and not reflective of Combs' actual behavior. However, the prosecution remains adamant that Combs should not be released on bail. They argue that the severity of the charges, particularly the allegations, warrants keeping him in custody. They also contend that his vast wealth and influence make him a potential flight risk, despite his defense team's claims to the contrary. According to the indictment, Combs relied on various individuals, including high-ranking business supervisors, personal assistants, security and household staff, to orchestrate what prosecutors describe as events. These sessions involved explicit acts and the transportation of victims and commercial workers, often across state lines or internationally. Combs employees were responsible for handling logistics such as booking hotel rooms and supplying materials. When damage occurred to the rooms, these same staff members allegedly cleaned up and helped arrange travel for participants. The indictment also states that large sums of cash were delivered to Combs to pay the commercial workers. In March 2024, law enforcement raided Combs' homes in Miami, Florida, and Los Angeles, California. During the searches, they reportedly seized controlled substances, which prosecutors consider crucial evidence in supporting the charges. The indictment paints a troubling picture of how Combs allegedly maintained control over his victims. To further manipulate and dominate his victims, Combs would make promises of career opportunities or financial support. When those individuals resisted his demands, he allegedly threatened to ruin their careers or cut off financial backing. Additionally, Combs is accused of tracking his victims' movements, dictating their appearance, monitoring their medical records, and controlling their housing. During and separate from these freak-offs, he reportedly provided controlled substances to keep the victims compliant, furthering his control over them. They claim that Combs coerced victims into engaging in commercial acts using promises of career advancement or other forms of compensation. The allegations suggest that Combs systematically exceeded these individuals and that he arranged for them to travel across state lines or internationally to fulfill his desires. Despite the gravity of these accusations, the indictment is notably missing some elements that have surfaced in previous civil complaints. Notably, it does not include any allegations involving minors, although rumors have circulated for years about underage individuals being present at Combs's parties. U.S. Attorney Damian Williams has stated that while more charges could be added as the investigation continues, the current indictment focuses on the crimes for which prosecutors believe they have the strongest evidence. Combs' Bail Request and Defense Strategy In response to the charges, Combs' legal team has laid out a detailed argument for why he should be released on bail while awaiting trial. 
His defense maintains that Combs is not a flight risk and that his actions in recent months demonstrate his willingness to cooperate with the legal process. According to the defense, Combs voluntarily traveled to New York ahead of the indictment and offered to turn himself in. However, despite these gestures, federal agents carried out a highly publicized arrest, which the defense team describes as unnecessary. The proposed bail package involves a $50 million bond co-signed by several of Combs' close family members, including his mother, Janice Combs, his sister, the mother of his eldest daughter, and his three adult sons. The bond would be secured by equity in Combs' Miami home, located on Star Island, which is valued at approximately $48 million. His legal team highlights that Combs has already paid off the remaining mortgage on the home, leaving it free to be used as collateral. The defense also offers to use equity from Janice Combs' home as additional security for the bond. Furthermore, the defense has proposed that Combs be placed under house arrest with GPS monitoring. Combs and several of his family members, including his children, have already surrendered their passports, further underscoring his commitment to staying in the country while the legal process unfolds. Additionally, his attorneys revealed that Combs is in the process of selling his private planes to prevent any possibility of fleeing. Prosecution's Perspective and Possible Future Charges U.S. Attorney Damian Williams, who leads the prosecution, has indicated that more charges could still be forthcoming. Although the current indictment covers a wide range of serious offenses, the prosecution has left open the possibility that additional charges may be filed if new evidence comes to light. This is particularly significant given the rumors that minors may have been involved in some of the events in question, although no charges related to minors have been filed as of yet. Williams has stressed that the current indictment focuses on the crimes that prosecutors believe they can prove beyond a reasonable doubt. However, he has also suggested that the investigation is ongoing and that nothing is off the table as more information becomes available. Combs' legal team has strongly criticized the prosecution's approach, accusing the government of making the process more complicated than necessary. They argue that Combs has demonstrated his willingness to cooperate, pointing to his voluntary travel to New York and offer to surrender. Despite this, they say, federal agents chose to arrest him in a highly public manner, which they view as an unnecessary escalation. In their defense of Combs, his legal team has also highlighted his philanthropic work, including his contributions to the Boys and Girls Club of America, his efforts to open a charter school in New York, and his fundraising activities during the COVID-19 pandemic. While these details do not directly relate to the charges against him, they are part of the defense's broader strategy to present Combs in a positive light and argue for his release on bail. As Sean Diddy Combs faces one of the most challenging periods of his life, the outcome of these legal proceedings will have significant and lasting consequences. The charges brought against him are severe, and the evidence outlined by the prosecution paints a disturbing picture of his alleged actions. If found guilty, Combs could face a lengthy prison sentence, potentially marking the end of a chapter in his life. While his defense team continues to fight for his release on bail and seeks to challenge the allegations in court, the prosecution remains steadfast in pursuing justice for the victims. The case serves as a reminder of how power, wealth, and influence can be used to control others and the role of the legal system in holding individuals accountable for their actions. Defense Claims of Sean Diddy Combs Commitment to Facing the Trial Sean Diddy Combs' defense team has made it clear that he plans to confront the charges against him head-on, asserting that Combs has never shied away from a challenge. In their legal filings, his attorneys state that Combs has faced numerous hardships in his life and will tackle this case with the same determination, expressing confidence in his ability to defend himself and prevail. The defense is portraying Combs as a figure who is ready to take responsibility and navigate through this complex legal situation, a narrative they hope will support his request for bail. 
However, the prosecution paints a starkly different picture of Combs. They argue that he is both dangerous and poses a significant risk to the community, which they say justifies keeping him in custody without bail. According to the prosecution, Combs not only remains a flight risk, but also has a history that suggests he could obstruct justice if released. Their portrayal of Combs emphasizes his ability to manipulate people in situations, which they argue makes him a continued threat if allowed freedom during the trial process. The prosecution's case relies heavily on allegations that Combs used women to participate in what have been described as these events, often involving large quantities of were designed to keep female victims compliant, even as they dealt with fatigue and emotional exhaustion. According to court documents, the prosecution claims that Combs subjected his victims to both physical and emotional abuse to maintain control over them. The prosecution cites numerous examples of Combs' alleged violent behavior, at least a dozen witnesses are prepared to testify, supporting the prosecution's claims that they either saw Combs' violent actions firsthand or observed the aftermath, such as the injuries sustained by the women involved. The 2016 video incident with Cassandra Ventura One key incident frequently referenced in the legal documents involves a 2016 video of Combs allegedly his former partner, Cassandra Ventura, in a Los Angeles hotel. The prosecution claims that Combs attempted to prevent this video from being publicly released by bribing hotel security. According to the filing, when a member of the hotel security team intervened during the altercation, Combs offered the individual a significant amount of cash to ensure their silence. When this bribe was refused, Combs reportedly directed his employees to take further action, resulting in the disappearance of the surveillance footage from the hotel's servers just days after the incident. These allegations mirror those Ventura made in her lawsuit, raising the question of whether she is now cooperating with the government. Given that her accusations align with the charges filed, it seems likely that Ventura's account is being taken seriously by federal prosecutors, who may be relying on her testimony to bolster their case. He alleged Kid Cuddy arson incident. In addition to the allegations of violence toward Ventura, the prosecution has also referenced a separate incident from 2011 involving rapper Kid Cuddy. According to Ventura's previous claims, Combs set fire to Kid Cudi's car in retaliation for the artist showing interest in her. This incident is now part of the broader racketeering case. The prosecution's filing includes new details about the alleged arson, claiming that Combs conspired with others to carry out the attack. In December 2011, Combs and a co-conspirator allegedly individual at in order to facilitate a break-in at the residence of Individual One. Two weeks after the break-in, Combs' associate reportedly set fire to Kid Cudi's car. Police and fire department reports documented the arson, concluding that the fire had been intentionally set. Several witnesses are expected to testify that Combs bragged about his involvement in the incident, and this alleged arson is being used to support the charge. While Combs is not specifically charged with arson, the incident is part of the larger criminal enterprise that the prosecution argues he controlled. Concerns about public safety Another major point of concern for the prosecution is Combs' alleged access to fire. In their argument for keeping Combs in custody, prosecutors presented photographs of weapons found in his homes during recent raids. They argue that Combs' access to weapons, combined with his history of violence and manipulation, makes him a danger to public safety if released. The prosecution also emphasized that Combs' wealth and influence make it easy for him to escape accountability. They argue that even with restrictions like house arrest or GPS monitoring, Combs could still pose a threat by obstructing justice, influencing witnesses, or continuing to intimidate victims. These concerns about public safety and the potential for Combs to tamper with evidence or witnesses form the basis of the prosecution's strong opposition to his release on bail. The defense's proposed bail package 
In contrast, Combs' defense team has put together a detailed proposal for his release on bail, arguing that his commitment to the legal process shows he is not a flight risk. They highlight that Combs voluntarily traveled to New York in anticipation of the charges and offered to turn himself in, which they argue demonstrates his willingness to cooperate with authorities. As part of the proposed bail package, Combs has agreed to several conditions. First, a $50 million bond would be secured by equity in his Miami home, which is valued at approximately $48 million. In addition, members of his family, including his mother, Janice Combs, have agreed to co-sign the bond. Combs has also surrendered his passport, and several of his family members, including his children, have done the same. The defense also revealed that Combs is selling his private planes, further reducing the possibility of him fleeing. The defense has proposed that Combs be placed under house arrest with GPS monitoring to ensure that he remains within the designated areas while awaiting trial. They emphasize that Combs' philanthropic efforts, such as his work with the Boys and Girls Club of America and his fundraising during the COVID-19 pandemic, show his commitment to positive social causes. These details are part of their broader argument that Combs should be released on bail, allowing him to prepare for his defense while under strict supervision. Firearms seized during the 2024 searches. In March 2024, law enforcement conducted searches of Sean Diddy Combs' residences in both Miami, Florida, and Los Angeles, California, seizing a substantial amount of firearms and ammunition. This is notable because possessing firearms with defaced serial numbers is a federal crime. The authorities also discovered a high-capacity drum alongside the two of which were found in Combs' Miami bedroom closet. The weapons were disassembled and stored alongside magazines loaded with ammunition. Along with these illegally modified law enforcement also recovered six legally purchased from Combs' homes, some of which were stored in safes. The discovery of these has become a significant aspect of the prosecution's case, as it highlights the presence of potential threats and adds weight to their argument that Combs poses a public safety risk if released on bail. Allegations of Witness Tampering and Obstruction As part of the legal proceedings, the prosecution accuses Combs of attempting to interfere with witnesses and manipulate their testimonies. According to court filings, after a lawsuit was filed against him in November 2023, Combs allegedly reached out to potential victims and witnesses, including individuals he hadn't communicated with for years, in an effort to alter their narratives regarding his criminal conduct. For example, just three days after Cassandra Ventura's lawsuit was filed, Combs reportedly made multiple calls to another victim of his abuse. Using the cell phone of a co-conspirator, Combs allegedly tried to manipulate this victim into believing that she had willingly participated in the acts, urging her to support him and maintain their friendship. He even assured the victim that she wouldn't have to worry about anything if she complied. Furthermore, the prosecution claims that Combs continued to reach out to witnesses after learning of the ongoing criminal investigation. Following the execution of search warrants at his residences, Combs allegedly contacted other witnesses, some of whom had already received grand jury support, in an effort to sway their potential testimonies. This behavior, according to the prosecution, constitutes obstruction of justice and adds to their argument that Combs cannot be trusted to remain compliant with court orders if released on bail. The prosecution's evidence and strength of the case the prosecution argues that the weight of the evidence against Combs is overwhelming, which is a key factor in their push to deny him bail. They have conducted interviews with more than 50 victims and witnesses, many of whom directly experienced or witnessed Combs' abusive behavior. These accounts, according to the prosecution, corroborate each other and align with other forms of evidence collected during the investigation. The consistency of these testimonies has helped strengthen the prosecution's case. In addition to witness statements, the authorities have collected significant physical evidence during the investigation.
More than 90 electronic devices, including cell phones, laptops, hard drives, and surveillance systems, have been seized, along with extensive digital storage accounts. This evidence reportedly contains footage and documentation that shows activities tied to Combs and his associates. The prosecution has also cited the discovery of more than 1,000 bottles of during the raids on Combs' properties, which they allege were used during orchestrated events. These items, coupled with the controlled substances found at the residences, serve as further physical evidence that supports the charges against Combs. Denial of bail and the court's decision. During the bail hearing, the prosecution argued that Combs' actions, combined with the serious nature of the charges, warranted his continued detention. They emphasized the potential danger Combs posed to both the public and witnesses, citing the extensive evidence of violence, fire. Given the allegations that many of Combs' crimes took place within his own home, the prosecution argued that placing him under house arrest would do little to prevent further misconduct. The prosecution also pointed out that Combs' wealth and influence make him a flight risk. Even with conditions such as GPS monitoring, house arrest, and the surrender of his passport, they argued that his resources would allow him to continue obstructing justice or potentially flee the country. The presence of and high capacity mag along with his attempts to influence witnesses, added to the prosecution's case for denying bail. The court, presided over by Magistrate Judge Robin F. Tarnavsky of the Southern District of New York, sided with the prosecution. The judge noted that there is a legal presumption in cases involving serious charges that the defendant should be detained unless the defense can rebut that presumption. After reviewing the evidence presented by both sides, the judge ruled that the defense had not successfully countered this presumption. In her ruling, Judge Tarnovsky cited the significant evidence of violence, witness tampering, and the presence of firearms in Combs' homes as primary reasons for denying bail. She acknowledged the presence of Combs' family members in court and expressed gratitude for their support, but ultimately concluded that the safety of the public and the integrity of the case outweighed any assurances provided by the defense. As a result, Sean Diddy Combs was ordered to remain in custody pending trial, the investigation, and the call for more information. The prosecution emphasized that the investigation into Combs' activities is far from over. They revealed that the case has already resulted in a large body of evidence and that the number of witnesses is expected to grow as more individuals come forward. The prosecution encouraged anyone with additional information about Combs's criminal conduct to come forward and assist in the investigation. In a public statement, U.S. Attorney Damian Williams expressed his appreciation for the victims and witnesses who had already contributed to the case. He acknowledged the courage of those who had come forward and stressed the importance of their testimonies in bringing Combs' alleged criminal behavior to light. Williams also reiterated that this is an ongoing investigation and that additional charges could be filed as more evidence emerges. Combs faces a lengthy legal battle, as Sean Diddy Combs faces one of the most high-profile legal battles of his life, the stakes are incredibly high. The charges against him carry severe penalties that could result in a lengthy prison sentence if he is convicted. The weight of the evidence, both physical and testimonial, appears to be substantial, and the prosecution is prepared to pursue the case to its full extent. Combs's defense team is expected to continue fighting for his release and to challenge the evidence presented by the prosecution. However, with the denial of bail, Combs will remain in custody as the trial approaches. This chapter of his life is likely to have far-reaching consequences, not just for his legal standing, but also for his public image and personal relationships. As the investigation continues, the outcome of this case will have significant implications, 
not only for Sean Diddy Combs, but also for the broader conversation about power, influence, and accountability in the entertainment industry. Whether additional charges will be brought or more witnesses will come forward remains to be seen, but the trial is set to be a defining moment in the ongoing saga surrounding Combs and his alleged criminal activities.